Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Just three days ago, in an interview with NBC, Congressman John Lewis of Georgia called Donald Trump illegitimate, and he followed up by saying he won't attend the inauguration. Well, Trump responded with a series of bellicose tweets. The cable networks went wall to wall with their coverage of all this, and the rest is history, of course, and you've been watching it. This is a fight Democrats started, and they seem to enjoy it so far. Republicans seem to enjoy it, too. But what's the greater point of all of this? Will attacks like the one from Congressman Lewis help the Democrats win elections going forward? And it's not an idle question, given that in the past eight years under Barack Obama, the Democratic Party has lost more than 1,000 office holders nationwide. Joining us now is someone who wants to lead the Democrats into the future, former Fox contributor Jamu Green, who is running for DNC chair. Jamu, thanks for joining us tonight. Good evening, Tucker. So you were asked about this um, uh, over the weekend on Fox and Friends, uh, asked about Congressman Lewis's statement, and you described what happened in November as the alleged election. I think I'm quoting you exactly, the alleged election. By that, did you mean that it's an election that didn't actually take place, or that we should pretend didn't happen, or what did you mean? As someone who wants to lead the Democratic Party, what's your position on that? Here's, I think, the position of not just Democrats or Republicans, just like I said that morning, Americans. Something happened in this election with Russia. Something happened uh -huh. that was so significant that the Democratic members of Congress that got that classified briefing stormed out of that room. And we may never know what that is if it stays classified, but we, we all have those questions. And, and to your opening, Tucker, I don't... I don't think anybody enjoys this. I don't think anybody likes this. This is an attack on our democracy. And Donald Trump had an opportunity after he was the president-elect to start to try to heal the wounds from the election. And instead, he chose to take us in a different direction and continue his type of okay. just baseless attacks. But. Someone right, like got, John Lewis, so, who has uh, the Navy deemed so respected an American that they named right. a ship after him, to see right. what Donald Trump is doing on Martin Luther King Day, right. uh, no one is standing for it. Not Democrats, okay. not Republicans, not anybody who cares about the future of this country. So he's the one congressman out of 435 you're not allowed to attack. But That's my not question what I to said. You, That's though, ridiculous. Th th my, my question to you is, though, if you're elected chair of the Democratic Party, I intend to be, and, and you intend to be, your line to Democrats when you go across the country to the Jefferson Jackson dinner or whatever, you're going to say, we would have won that election if only Vladimir Putin, in ways we can't explain or be specific about, hadn't intervened. No. So your understanding is Hillary lost because of Putin. I think that's what you just said. No, that's not what I said. And so... Don't put words in my mouth, Tucker. There are lots of I'm things asking. the Democratic Party needs to address. Certainly, we have to find better ways of communicating our issues in a way that are going to inspire communities to uh, turn out for us. We have to make sure that we are defending our policies in the same way that Donald Trump was so effective as a communicator, we have to be able right. to do the same thing. And we will do it and we'll win with, by telling the truth, which is the opposite of what we saw from the Republican in the, in the race in 2016. But we have a lot of work okay, to so be done. We have to bring young people in. We have to make sure that the infrastructure of the party has the resources that they need. This is not just a, a, a one-issue uh, right. situation. And so I'm but, not going to play a game one, and simplify okay, no, no, I get it with it. you, Tucker. I, and I, I don't want you to simplify it. I want you to explain it because you're running for this. So the first thing you mentioned in that long litany was we need to get the communities out. Now, one community that did not come out for you is white voters. Hillary Clinton won 37 percent of the white vote. That's the lowest number any Democrat running for president has received in more than 30 years. So it's clearly a massive problem for her. Do you see that as a problem? And what would you do to rectify, to get white voters to vote Democrat again? Well, I, I think that there were some strategic mistakes that were made as far as where we were going to communicate, what types of messages were going to be communicated. It's a campaign. I get it. I'm not going to you know, say that we need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, we need to make better decisions when it comes to how we tell the Democratic Party's story. And to make sure that whether you're a white working class voter or a low income African American voter or middle class working family, all of us, we are going to be harmed 
harmed, drastically harmed by right. the policies that this administration okay. is clearly intending to put in place. And so it is Simone, about communication, because okay, they, they communication. be the set communication. That so we here's, know. Here's a, here's a famous and skilled communicator. Her name is Simone Sanders. She was, in fact, the spokeswoman for Bernie Sanders, kind of a big deal. And she said this, and I'm quoting on CNN, in this November after the election, in my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. Do you agree with that? Look, I, I think that it is great to have people like Simone's passion and, you know, certainly the young voters that, that were attracted to Bernie Sanders. They are a part of the Democratic Party, and we need to find ways where everybody feels welcomed. I, I don't but wait agree a second. I'm, so, with... I'm sorry. I, what do you think of that? We don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. Do you think she <laughs> should have said that? Do you think that's an okay thing to say? And do you agree with it? Well, clearly I'm in the race, Tucker, so I, I very specifically think we need to move green leading the Democratic Party right now. No, no, don't, don't be silly. Ask the, answer the question. I mean, she said that's we don't need white people. Race. Okay, but hold on. This is not a fringe person. This is Simone Sanders, who you know. We don't need white people leading the party. Now, I don't even need to play the thought experiment what would happen if someone on the Republican side said we don't need black people leading the Republican Party. That would be bad, and I would denounce it. Will you denounce that? Is that okay that she said that? And do you agree with her? Look, just because we have the same hairstyle um, doesn't mean that uh, I agree with everything that she says. And certainly well, you I think that? you should have Simone on your show ask her. What we need are people who no, wait, understand so the Democratic answer, wait, Party on. from inside I'm, I'm, out I'm throwing like it up I really do. slow for you to hit. I'm asking I don't need you, you to talk do you slow think to me, Tucker. Oh, oh. No, no, to throw it up slow, the pitch, so you can hit it. Do you think it's okay to say we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party? And I'm expecting you're going to say that's an appalling thing to say. You can't say that about an entire racial group. Go it's, ahead. It's not, the right, it's not the right message that needs to be out there right but now. But is it wrong to say that? What do you mean not the right message? Is it, is it a good thing to say or is that an immoral thing? I mean, can you imagine saying that yourself? It's not, like it's not what I believe. It's not what I believe. So I don't know why I'm having a conversation with you about what another African American woman said. You, well, I we explained it to you at the beginning. We don't all think and say the same well, things. You, of course, or I'm not suggesting that. Hillary Clinton, who's not an African American woman, said in April during the campaign, she said, and I think I'm quoting her, "We need to recognize white people, our own privilege, and practice humility." And I thought, well, that's sort of a big generalization. Do you think unemployed machinists in Ohio need to recognize their privilege or the children of OxyContin addicts in Appalachia need to recognize their privilege? Come and what on, do you think? Tucker, what, you is, are... is there a reason white voters abandoning the Democratic Party? Because maybe they feel attacked by things like that? Is that a crazy thing to say? Look, Tucker, you're, you're a really smart man. And you understand. I'm asking you, obvious questions. You understand nuance and communication. And you do a lot of critical thinking, trying to boil that statement down into something that is an attack on a voter in a certain state. That that's just ridiculous. I, I'm tired of these types of conversations. And you know, really, quite this frankly, is I'm quoting Hillary this is Clinton the here. I'm not saying taking that out of context. Makes, this is a real conversation. You know, this actually. is what makes people and you're not opt out of my politics. Question. And part of why we lost is because people weren't inspired. They were disgusted. They were Wait, disgusted by the so discussion my asking, in the my 2016 what that means? election. So my asking what Hillary Clinton meant when she said that in public is, quote, part of the reason people are opting out of politics? I'm quoting Look, a candidate you supported and asking you to comment on what she said. And you're accusing me of being divisive. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> Do you think you're divisive, Tucker? Do you think that you're I'm you asking you, <laughs> which I'm side asking of it are you on? if that's a fair thing to say. And my own view, as you can probably tell from my tone, is that's an awful thing to say about people based on their skin color. It is absolutely fair to acknowledge that there are issues of white privilege out there that concern very specific communities, and they're based in reality. But it is also absolutely fair and, and something that I think Democrats understand about the pain that all Americans, all Americans are going through. But I'm not going to sit here and, and have this conversation that conservatives, Republicans, want the Democratic Party to be having and to divide us in this way. Oh, no, no, because no, 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 actually, no. we are united. We are united in what are we you? need from then an economic fairness standpoint. We are united in what okay. we need to protect women's rights, which are coming under attack before okay. this now administration the even takes so let's get steps into the White House. Okay. We are united. I'm not going to let you divide okay. us along those lines, because it's not as simple <laughs> as that. And quite frankly, actually, it's not as stupid as that. Uh-huh. I was quoting Hillary Clinton and asking you what you thought of it, and you started calling me names. And I'm merely trying I to get your you view, names. but you retreated immediately into talking points. So let me get specific Don't again and see so if you can handle it. Let, let me see if you, can respond, You've got if, you can respond, if you can respond to this one. So you're saying you're looking for an economic message that speaks to the needs 
of the middle class and of working people of all colors. And I applaud you for attempting to find that message. So for eight years, President Obama has been telling us he wants to lower drug prices because they're too high, right? And that was part of the purpose of Obamacare, but it didn't work, as you know, they're still too high, right? Right. A very fast way to do that would be to re-import drugs from Canada. Donald Trump is calling for this. Why in eight years did Barack Obama not call for that? Barack Obama called for so many fixes to Obamacare. No, and that's not you Obamacare. understand you understand what Republicans did when that man was first inaugurated. They said on day one they were going to obstruct. And they successfully did in many ways. He and the administration were very clear. There are lots of things we need to still fix with mm -hmm. health care. There are lots of problems. What about re-importing drugs drug at a cheaper prices. price from Canada? But if you don't have Why somebody for that? in Congress, if you don't have any leadership on the other side who understands they need to put the American people first instead of trying to destroy oh, government because they Jumeau, didn't this is like silly. Barack Obama, this is silly. That, Democrat, is, that is what is wrong. Come that on. is you're, what you're, keeps you're people disenfranchised. Look, I don't want to relitigate it, but if you're going to generalizations that aren't true, Democrats held all three branches <laughs> of government when, when Obama came into office. Look, Come I'm, on, I'm just Tucker. asking. Here that's, you have Donald, trans, here, that's transparently false. Here you have The Donald obstruction Trump. that the Republican okay, Party did to fixing Obamacare, to making sure that we could continue okay. to get well, healthcare you just in this the country question, better, just pass on? Is, was abysmal. Do you and know what it if is? You, if you deny it, if you deny it, that's on I'm not you. That's on I'm you. Not you and your I'm therapist can stop, talk stop about that. Sec. I'm not denying that Republicans tried to stop Barack Obama's agenda. And sometimes it was justified and others it wasn't. But I'm <laughs> Most asking of the this time, very all of the time. Fine. I'm unjustified. asking you a very specific question. And I'm asking you, do you agree with Donald Trump's plan to reimport drugs at a lower price from Canada? American drugs have been sold in Canada at a lower price, bringing them back. The pharmaceutical companies are against it. Obama did not push for it. Trump is now pushing for it. What's your response to that? Are you for that or against it? Simple question. I haven't seen the, the exact plan you're talking about, so I'm not going to play this gotcha game. I'm not going to sit here and gotcha cheerlead, saying, cheerlead somebody who is refusing to even celebrate Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Day and understand that he is... Why do you is, always bring it back to race? I'm asking you about That's where this economics. segment started, Tucker. You're the one who picked the topic. I didn't. I'm, I'm asking you about health care. I'm asking you about lowering drug prices. And Trump, look, I'm not endorsing everything Trump does. I'm just saying here he's doing something that overlaps with what Democrats have wanted to do for a long time, decades. And he's saying, yeah, let's do it. And I'm asking you, are you for it or not? Are you so partisan you can't just say, yeah, that, you know, I don't like Trump, but that's a good idea. You but you what? can't. Can you? I am the last person that is going to cheerlead some small little one-off from Donald Trump because I am looking at the bigger picture of what this man is about to do to this country and well, how about responding the how about to the waves of people who are okay. terrified, who are, who are fearful, the women uh -huh. who are marching the day okay. of the, the inauguration and the men who are joining them because they understand thin, we have to resist. Impressive. We have, have to, to resist. All right, well, good luck I, with that.